<laughs> I don't know how many time I do, times I do that. You press the wrong music button. But here we are. This is the Afternoons with Josh, Ken, and Amanda. Good morning, friends. It's a silly look at a serious world. Uh, it doesn't matter when you listen, Ken, as long as you did your your workout before the podcast and just decided to dress like Ken Knapsack. It's always the afternoon. Oh, look at you both. Look at you. Uh, all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I don't know it, if I'd call myself bright-eyed or bushy-tailed today, Ken, but <laughs> I appreciate that. Same. 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 But hey, uh, here we are, everybody. We're, uh, we're, <laughs> we're doing it. Yeah, we're, we're doing here. It. I'm this so happy to be back. I missed two weeks. I was going to say, it feels like we had... Uh, Man, the, yeah. the Mandalorian is back. As Josh would say, I've just been out there providing for my family. What do you <laughs> want me to do? Oh, uh, that's so sweet. That's so sweet. Uh, yeah, I, for, Amanda, you look like, I mean, we might have to take the uh, names oh. down just so we can fully see on, on the YouTube version. Amanda, you look like you are in a fashion week uh, review. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say she kind of looks like a young uh, Devil Wears Prada. What's her name? Yeah. Uh, Vogue. Yeah. I feel big as a house today in this sweater, but yes, I am rocking um rocket. Rocking a cheetah sweater. Nice. Cheetah. No cheetahs were harmed in the Christ making of this sweater. Christy McGee says, uh, isn't that Amanda sweatshirt? Uh actually we both have the same sweatshirt. So oh, yeah. yes. Josh has his own sweatshirt, which he really loves. It's a Moo sweatshirt. It's got a huge neck so that when I work out, I don't like I don't like being when I'm working out, I like being like hinged at the neck. You know what wait, I mean? If I'm going out to do some wintery activities, sure, cinch my neck up. Wait a minute, wait. I gotta ask you a question. You work out in a sweater? Yeah. Josh I works out in heavy layers yeah. because he thinks he sweats more. I need oh. a good sweat, Ken. It's the Martin Lawrence thing. Yes. Um, can I also just say, Rodrigo, wow, thank you so much. This is exactly the kind of love I needed <laughs> on a Friday morning. I look pregs tired. Well, guess what? I am pregs and also tired. tired. <laughs> so you are not wrong, but thank you so much for pointing that out. I am fully aware. I slept maybe... A lot of Maybe tossing like and turning last two night. Two hours total last night. I'm not actually sure. I think I just don't sleep at all anymore. I think I'm just kind of in like a mm -hmm. a haze. I don't know. But yeah. pregnancy is uncomfortable. Wait, hold on, Ken. You in a haze? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope I hope Josh got the sleep he needed. Amanda, that's all. That's all we care about. Is Josh. I mean, really, I'm not getting any beauty rest these days, but you know he is. Okay, so Amanda got this pillow. Yeah, and it's it's like a wedge, but really and truly, it just looks like real separated boobs. Oh my gosh! Get well, it? I never really Get thought it? of it that like that, but let me tell you the uh, the amount of pillows I've purchased. Can a motorboating her pillow? That, okay, <laughs> sick. The amount of pillows that I have purchased during this pregnancy to try to get comfortable yeah. is. Yeah absurd yeah now i just have these pillows shaped like different creatures all around the house it's yeah. like we got the star wars pillow we got the boobs yeah. pillow we got, got the snake, mini pillow i got a snake pillow i got a snake yeah. pillow she i have also, a mini pillow that i mean it is i like I, I really feel like i'm at the point where someone needs to tuck me in and right. wedge all of the pillows like under me and beside me in a perfect way which Josh doesn't do. So I think I'm going to have to hire like a third person to just come tuck me in at night. Wait, what uh, do I do? You don't tuck me in. Uh, well, I mean, sometimes I burrito you, give you a little burrito, but I, I'm not good. Like, I feel so bad. I don't want to touch her because I feel like if I do, yes, burrito, tuck, 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 tuck. tuck, tuck, tuck. Um, I feel like if I do touch her, I'm like interrupting her sleep. So I basically have this like sliver on the side of the bed, which my body has gotten used to sleeping in the sliver. And I got to tell you, I feel like a nice little cocoon butterfly over there. Well, while Pregaton over here kind of is trying to get comfortable and I feel terrible. I wish there was something I could do other than make food and try and make her laugh and come up with really good puns for dad jokes. Which might but hurt. Apparently, I'm useless, Ken. Yeah, yeah. Which might hurt if you make your laugh. You never know. Uh, yeah, I, I'm used to the sliver too. I, I, I'm interested in that pillow though, Amanda. Uh, the the uh, the boob pillow. I, I, I might want to see how that works. Uh, it actually, I will say, it's the most com compact pregnancy pillow I've found that doesn't like take over our entire bed. Right. Um, and it does 
work for what I need it to do, but it doesn't keep me comfortable all night, unfortunately. We also have a queen bed, which we mm. like because we like Abby. being close Abby. to each other, but I'm growing, I'm outgrowing our bed. Like I am always on the edge. Meanwhile, Josh is just cuddled up over there like a sleeping little baby. See, wait a minute. See, wait a minute. <laughs> You're on the edge. What? Amanda said she's on the edge of the bed. You said you've got a sliver on the cor corner of the bed, which is the truth. Uh, the middle is kind of no man's land for the stomach. So it can like, it, there's a nice little curvature. In I there. wouldn't say that. You, yeah. you put your pillow in between us. Sometimes, yeah. I have like an arm pillow, the two pillow arm pillow. You guys, yeah, know which how it he goes. doesn't use all night. So there's just a giant pillow in between us. You that I move could it. be using that part of bed. But here's the other thing: I don't like when someone's breathing on me when I'm sleeping, and I it wakes me up. And so if we're turned face to face, oh, we're yeah. just breathing on each other, and I I hate it. To all those married couples out there, or couples, or girlfriends, boyfriends, uh, life partners, domestic partnerships, if you sleep with faces. So, like looking at each other and you breathe on each other. Are you okay? Like there is some, that, that doesn't weird. work. It mean, yeah, it means two things. You're both sociopaths or you're about to die in the Titanic. Yes. Thank you, Ken. Absolutely. Yes. I don't want people to smell my breath 24 hours a day, let alone at night when it slowly but surely decrepts into what I taste in the morning, which is horrendous. It's not good. I, yeah. So if, if I turn <laughs> to my side and he's facing me, I'm like, Oh, I'm oh. going to roll right back. Yeah. That, I, that smells like 2 a.m. breath. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that smells like he ate Thanksgiving potato chips before bed. Well, and Josh sleeps not all night, but sometimes you sleep with your mouth open, which I'm sure I do too. But oh, yeah. especially when the mouth's open, it's just hot breath. It's not even the smell that so much gets me. It's just the hot breath coming my way. Well, here's the thing. Would you rather me breathe, like sleep with my mouth open or sleep with my mouth closed and snore? Because uh, I think that's the situation. Too. I agree with John G in the comments. Might be time to go two beds like my grandparents did. I, I have said for years that successful marriages are built on two beds. And I, I haven't tested that theory yet, but I think it's, it might be true. I, I, I see Ken. Know. I've offered many a time. Uh, we don't have room for a second bed. What are we gonna well, do? Well, we did team? have room for a second bed, and then you had to go get pregnant with some dude. Oh, right. <laughs> you had nothing to do with that. Now, okay, here's the thing, Ken, is I've offered multiple nights all the time. I will gladly sleep on the couch. I love a good couch sleep. I yeah. sleep on the couch like a baby. I love sleeping on the couch. Yeah, I would do it couch, every night. The couch feels like Damn. a place you get banished when you're in trouble or something. It I doesn't feel, have to be. I feel like we need to bring back the couch as a sleeping yeah, I place. I just don't Ken. like when he's like, I'll sleep on the couch. I'm like, no, are we in a fight? I just, See, I, that, Amanda, you're right. It's a negative connotation. I, I enjoy an occasional couch sleep. I had to do it last year and I had this, this weird face pain that I just, I was so uh, asleep. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't sleep and I didn't want to wake up Grace. So I went out to the couch and I got to tell you, it was, it was like a slumber party with myself. I, I really want, I, I start fights to try to get kicked out to the couch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. Ken, we got in a fight last Sunday and I slept on the couch and it was glorious. <laughs> Let me tell you. Woke you up did? in the mid. Yeah. Remember? I don't remember. Honestly, there's, I probably was annoyed with you. You did something <laughs> stupid. Oh, we got a little super chat coming in from Christian underscore oh, seven, yeah. AKA Christian all the way from Denmark. Ooh, oh, wait. Oh, no. Norway. The Bums Bums. Norway. Hello, everyone. Good to see gang back together. Missed you on the show, Amanda. I, oh, thank you. I didn't miss I her at all. Being here. Oh, please. You have <laughs> less to talk about when I'm not around. This is true. This is true. Josh, Josh is in less trouble when you're around, but it's okay. Uh, BC yeah. Tillerson. Yeah. King. I think that's what we have. We have a California king. I don't know because you can fit Fred of it, so that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> California king is. Yeah. Did you miss that joke? What you, you can fit Fresno on it. That's <laughs> makes sense. Good one. Good one. That's it's a good, a, that's a good one. A, a Thomas guide map joke. <laughs> that's what that it is. Was good. But even, <laughs> even with that, even with even with a cow king, I get two feet maybe on the edge because that two pound chihuahua push it pushes me out like yeah. It, oh, no. it's crazy. yeah and the two pound chihuahua no offense to ratsy she's adorable oh that's adorable does she have a little hoodie on oh yeah this is the el paso chihuahuas the minor league baseball team out there that uh, cuddy decker played for for a while oh um, nice nice um the ratsy's breath is will melt your face off it's the worst thing in the world oh it's my god 
It's what? we call, we call it uh, her 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 doo doo breath. It's just it's like oh no. It's it's halitosis times fifty. It's uh, and we brush your teeth. We brush your teeth. We brush them weekly. Yeah. It's, it's a thing. It's a whole. It takes like that. Chihuahua fights the toothbrush. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Christy McGee says at best tiny dogs are bed bullies. This is very true. But also like, listen, I've smelled some bag dog breath in my time. Rats is on another level. You, when we were at Collider, I remember picking up Ratsy and Grace was like, no. And I was like, whoa. I mean, it is. It is like you just ate all of the garlic and then oh, pooped in your mouth. It's oh, only no. gotten worse. It, that's that was like three four years ago it's only gotten worse it, <laughs> it's you can she just yawns from across the room and you're like yeah yeah, yeah. baxter yeah. not so much it's baxter's breath smells just like a constant uh, layer of simmering broccoli <laughs> <laughs> i've never that gotten close enough to baxter to, to smell it <laughs> yeah you wouldn't he'd murder you but yeah yeah <laughs> i mean it's not broccoli it's worse. yeah uh, Isn't rat broccoli supposed to bring you farts? Is that oh, broccoli? Yeah, it, it does, and so does his breath. Ratsy's breath smells like if you discovered a body in a train, <laughs> like <laughs> a train yard with your with your chums, uh, or on, on the train tracks, maybe even more specific, <laughs> with your chums when you were twelve. Like that's how that's her, her breath. But uh, <laughs> yeah, man, you, you, broccoli breath, breath might be bad, but it's a welcome change from uh, sarcophagus breath over there. Yes, sarcophagus breath. Mark Riley called it something the other day that his uncle used to call it like Meg, Merg or M M Merp or something, which is like what comes out of dead people's mouth when you, they die or something. And I was oh, like, God. ugh. Like a death, like the death rattle sound or? or No, like uh, what, like, you know, when the embalmer takes whatever's out of there, you know, oh, out yeah. of the mouth. That's that Because we were comparing that microwave oh. he brought to our new project that we go. are excited oh. to announce very, very soon in December, yeah. the announcement of the secret, high, highly secret Mark Ell Mark Riley, Ken right. Knapsack, uh, Josh McCuga secret project with guest appearances by many of your favorites uh, will mm -hmm. be announced in early December. But some of the names you know and names you haven't really been familiar with yet, it's going to be yes. fun. Sammy yes. Leon uh, Mendoza says, I live in El Paso. I need, uh, Sammy, I need a proper, this is not an actual official hat. I had to order special because the Chihuahua's website does not sell the right sized new era caps. If there's a store out there, let me know. Let me know, Sammy, because I want to get a uh, good hat. Christy McGee nailed it. Thank you, Christy. It's called Mung. Yeah, Ew, that's that the word. That sounds like what it would be yeah. called. Yeah, it sounds also sounds like, like a great jazz fusion band. <laughs> We are Mung. Yeah. Speaking of Mung, no, um, not mm -hmm. Mung, but our buddy Mark Fernandez uh, sent mm -hmm. me some of his music last night. I can't play it on the show uh, yeah. from his his Ron Ravog, which is his music thing. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this. I really don't care. But he sent it to me. And Ken, let me ask, have you ever heard his music before? I don't think so. I talked to him yesterday okay. too, but I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I haven't heard his music. I talked to him music, as music, like singing, like he sings. He sings and plays instruments. He's like a musician. Whoa. Yeah, I might play it for you later. Um, because he sent it to me, and I was shocked. One, it's very good. It's it's a very it's very good music. Right. Two, he had reached out to me asking me a question, and I directed him to you because I called you. I was like, Ken's in on all the gossip. So, yes, yes, I didn't have the answer for him. He asked me if someone was a war veteran, and I said, unless there was a war in Burbank I missed, I don't think so. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> yep, well said, Ken. And so uh, I I listened to it, and I got to tell you, it's like a fusion, like you just said, Hmong Jazz Fusion. It's like a fusion of Coffee House, Mazzy Star, Radiohead-ish at points. And I'm not, I, like, I've only heard one Radiohead song and they all kind of sound the same to me. It's just like a lot of humming and like one word said over and over again. Right. And it, it, it has like, you know, a very, it's, I don't want to say whiny, but it's like, oh, this music has played in a vintage store for the last six years. And I don't think I've heard a different song, but I don't know if I would know a different song. Right. First of all, does, Fernandez sound like Hope Sandoval of Massey Star or yes. someone else? Okay. He I, well, I don't know if it's a band or if he's the one man Ron Revog band, but if he is, he can sing. Like he's got a high pitched, like a, a slowish Coldplay voice. Like imagine if Coldplay mixed with Massey Star mixed with like. 
you're, you know, I'm dying to hear this now. Yeah, it's very, it's good. I like, I, I heard it and I thought it was going to be like, hey, I'm Josh McCuga and here's my song about this. And it's like, I like, uh, I like pizza with a friend named Lisa and I like John Tesha when I listen to Kesha. What? Everything just rhymes and it's a terrible rap song with like an awful beat behind it. That's my music. No, Ron Revog can nail it. I'm I'm intrigued now. There's so many things you said that I don't understand in the last uh, a few. You guys don't see there's a spider dropping from my ceiling. Um, I, don't I don't even know what he's talking about. Yeah, anymore. Amanda's on. She See, here's the great thing about Amanda being on the podcast. It's the same thing as when she's not on the podcast. She comes in hot for the first five minutes, <laughs> zones out for the middle 35 to 40, then comes at the end like, what did I miss? Did it's I miss? kind of like you how... Guys between the lack of sleep and the pregnancy brain, give me a freaking break. <laughs> I've got a human in my stomach. Like, That's right. come on. Ken, let me tell you a quick story. Ugh. Okay. Last night, a man has been trying to get our daughter on like camera, mm -hmm. like moving inside the belly. Right. Mm -hmm. And she is a little camera shy. Okay. But um, not even just camera shy. Anytime I ask Josh to like look at my belly to see it moving, yeah. she stops. I'm like, here we go. It's, I mean, am I, I'm pro we're probably going to have, we are the most like photo friendly people and we're going to have a child who's like, no pictures, please. <laughs> Which it's totally fine. When like the hippies children became uh, the uh, preppies uh, and the, and, and the Patrick Batemans of the eighties. And now those kids, be it's just, yeah. 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 So last night she was moving a little. So I put my ear on the belly to see if I could like hear anything in there. You know, maybe she was playing a little journey. Maybe she was <laughs> yeah, getting, she, she was just, I could hear a golf swing in the background. Just shoo, shoo. Uh, She punched me in the ear twice or kicked me in the ear twice. I like had it in there. Just like hit me. Yeah, hit yeah, me. It's crazy. I'll tell you what. I, I heard from Thorpe that that baby is alive with energy. Like just, boom, just. Well, the Makugas have a lot of energy. At least this one does. I mean, Amanda most of the time does, but when she only gets two hours of sleep and uh, <sighs> is real psyched about it, the energy level seems to plummet. Now, when we do do improv comedy, she always zones out. So, you know, um, Ken, we got a super chat in here yeah. from The Champs 2005. Champ. Now, I'm guessing You're The Champs 2005 is in reference to a Chicago team? That would make sense, right? Is that the year they won? The champs. Well, uh, they did they win a they haven't won a Super Bowl since oh, no. Yeah, right? that's uh was that the year they lost to the Colts? Did they lose to the Colts? What year did the Colts? They, lo they lost to the Colts. That would have been 2008, 2007 season. No, okay. sorry, 2006 season, 2007 Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Now, uh White Sox oh. 2005 World Series. There you go. I was going to say oh. I was going to go Blackhawks Stanley Cup, but I knew that was a little bit later. Right. Right. What was the goalie for the Blackhawks? Ed Belfour. Ed, Ed Belfour. Good pull, Josh. Good pull. Thank you. The Eagle. Um, Ed, yeah. The Eagle, Eddie Belfour. And Amanda uh, is gone. <laughs> Says Rodrigo. And Amanda is gone. Yeah. Her, I, I know has how she to, really been here? I know how to put Amanda to sleep. Uh, oh, oh, the 2005 White Sox? What about that AJ Przinsky, huh? Gone. <laughs> uh, do this uh, honestly if you guys say aj walker i'm i already i'm like okay we're talking about sports and he's not even a sport real sports person <laughs> he's <but>. not <laughs> i think mark ellis thought that he was the other day on the uh the golf show live stream that we all joined thank you all for watching the masters live stream. all right let me get to the champs 2005 finding now i didn't know this about you ken i knew about the white claws finding out ken doesn't like chowder and drinks white claws now is making me rethink everything i know about the world now I can understand. Listen, white claws are delicious. If you don't like them, that's totally fine. You don't like fruity, seltzery, low cal out malt liquor. That's totally fine. That's it's up to you. Like, honestly, true. I think Amanda misses the white claw. Now, mm -hmm. what is your reasoning for chowder? Because over here on the Makuga side, we are mm -hmm. big chowder people. I love I mean, chowder in a bread bowl. So this came up on Force Center because we were okay. reviewing that Mandalorian episode last week. Um, okay. A big Mando episode today we're going to review. But the last week one where they go to uh, the, the the planet there that uh, there's chowder. There's oh, that looked good. See? Yeah. I grew up, as you all know, Central Coast, Pismo Beach. There is a world famous. Uh, I mean, they're all world famous, right? Uh, there's a world famous uh, chowder mm -hmm. cafe called Splash Cafe. It's got it's got clam chowder straight mm -hmm. from the walk out and pull a clam out of the ocean. Okay. We're uh, going there. Yeah. You, you would love it. And it's served in a big bread bowl and people, people line up around the block when you could. Um, okay. knowing my hometown, they still are with no mask. <laughs> um, 
but um, I can't do chowder. I can't even look at it. I can't even think about it. It just looks like a bowl of 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 barf or mung. Um, the taste. I was scarred by uh, the, the 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 clams in our Volkswagen van when I was seven that were moving around after we had taken them from the beach when you could. It was legal back then. Um, and I just can't do it, Josh. I can't do it, Amanda. I can't do chowder. God now, bless you and your chowder heads. I can't do it. Now let me ask you a personal question, Ken. Have you did you have a bad experience with the chowder? Like, did you throw up from eating too much chowder? Nope. I I maybe had one spoonful my entire life. Wow. Is it, it the cream? Is it the slop? Is it the I clam itself? I kind of itself? understand the sight of it, though, because it does look mm. a little... I, 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 I really does... do think it's deep-seated psychological uh, trauma from that incident with the clams when I was seven in okay. the Volkswagen van, where I, I felt as though I was chased around a van by clams that did not move, but their tongues came out. Uh, and the thought of that in a soup couldn't I could never wrap my brain around it. Interesting. Okay. See, now I'm a huge chowder guy. I love it. Worked at a seafood restaurant in New Jersey. Used to eat a cup of chowder every day. Mm -hmm. Come into work, eat a cup of chowder, then eat a cup of snapper soup, which snapper soup will change your world. Ken, it's not fish, it's turtle. It is a snapping I turtle soup. I can't get on board with the turtle what? soup. Sorry. Yeah. I've heard of turtle soup, but Josh, have you seen a turtle? They're so cute. Ken, turtles are hideous. Uh, they're hideous. But with the Ken. turtles are hideous? What are you two monsters doing over there? There's my turtle thing. Remember, remember uh, Dana Carvey in the, uh, <laughs> what was that movie called? Um. Oh, God. What was that movie? Mr. Like Joe Chango. Man. Mr. Disguisio, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Disguisio. I did see Opportunity Knox in the theater, and I love that movie. The Opportunity um, Knox is solid. Mr. Disguisio yeah. was also my ninth grade American civics teacher. <laughs> now, Mr. Disguisio, uh, tall guy, bald, always wore uh, you know the same pair of gray dress slacks, three pleats mm -hmm. per leg. Uh, wow. A yellow or brown tinted shirt and had the same three Macy's ties Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then repeat Thursday, Friday. And then the one that should have been on, then it came. So, like every three days, every three business days, he would yeah. do it. Now, Mr. Disguisio, Ken, not sure if you know this about Mr. Disguisio. Mr. Yeah. Disguisio invented, he was one of the assistant football coaches and the assistant athletic director. Oh, right. There you go. And he, <laughs> I just, caught on that this wasn't a real story <laughs> this, you know what's great is if a man a master of disguise christy mcgee master of disguise mcgee got it mcgee got there he did not with mr disguise he got there. yeah you got there can, can somebody out there please draw a picture of Mr. Disguisio and send it into us so we can make a picture like we can make a t-shirt of Mr. Disguisio Mr. oh man Disguisio. oh man Ken, did you have you? I think you had Mr. Disguisio's sister, uh, Elizabeth Disguisio, as your home ec teacher, didn't you? In eighth grade, uh, yeah. She I, actually she was a student teacher. Uh, she only did about half the semester, oh. and then we ran her off. But then what was interesting, she came back as a totally different teacher, and we didn't know. She was like Disguisio. <laughs> We're like, <"Whoa." laughs> got it. Oh, you know what's you know what's great is I just had this vision kind of you and I doing like a three man, like a three person improv thing on stage and you and I are doing a thing and then Ken, Amanda walks on stage and goes, Oh, I just realized this wasn't real. Okay. I'll be back. It's a great scene. First of all, Amanda looked like uh, every villain that chases dogs in an animated movie right now, just back judging us I, with, the <laughs> with my cheetahs, my cheetah on. I definitely have Cruella de Vil vibes today. Yeah, totally. I also look like if, Cruella Disguisio. If you're, if you're watching this, <laughs> yeah. if you're watching this live. I also look like I have in a different background than Josh. Like, you like do. we're just in three different places. You do. It looks like we spliced you in with some. Yeah, yeah. totally. First, I, I love that in my world. If you're a master of disguise, at one point you have to go Disguisio. To like, <laughs> let the world know. Ken, I'm thinking next year you and I be Mr. Disguisio for Halloween. You do your version, which is clearly like a magician slash cape man, and yeah. mine is just a ninth grade American civics. Yeah, your, yours, yours is uh, gets a lot of pleats. I have a cape, and I just go, "Do you see me? No, Disguisio." <laughs> Ken, Ken, okay, I modeled Mr. Disguisio after my ninth grade civics teacher, Mr. Shalahida. Shalahida. Aka Mike Shalahida. 
Okay. Mm. Now, mm. I don't know if Mike Shalahita is still alive. God, I hope he is because he's an absolute legend. He was an assistant. He was the athletic director and at yeah. one point the assistant football coach. Okay. Now, here's the greatest part about Mr. Shalahita. Okay. Yeah. He was the American civics teacher. And Monday through Thursday, he would like sort of teach the class. He'd mostly just show old film strips, right? Whatever. Uh, you know, old, like real on real yeah. film yeah. projector. Like, hello and welcome to America's national parks. If yeah. you like littering, <laughs> come here. Like, Those like are the, these things are from the 70s and 80s, okay? They're yeah, yeah. so like, President Ronald Reagan has put his stamp on this national park as the place to be. Okay? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. then on th we would have a test every Friday on what we learned, quote, unquote. And on Thursday, he would read the answers to the test. <laughs> oh, yeah, I had a health. Uh, yeah. The day before <laughs> the test? He would yeah. he would read the questions and then give you the answers and you were supposed to like take notes and then if you got a bad grade on the test he's like I gave you the answer this is on you I, I would definitely have gotten a bad grade on that test <laughs> I think I, had, I didn't know that was the kind of student I was I didn't pay yeah. attention at all and <laughs> I I think I had a health teacher who was a football coach who did that too like I'm I'm just gonna give you what I got all right if you remember you remember <laughs> exactly which is actually pretty smart for how yeah. your students retain information 100%. and whether they listen or not. But I was yeah. definitely one of those students that didn't listen. I was like in class, I was, when you guys go on your sports <laughs> rants, that's yeah. me. Tangents, I wouldn't call them rants. <laughs> that, that would be like me when I was in class. I was just kind of like, where's Amanda? We don't know. <laughs> she's zoned out she's zoned out it's a good thing amanda didn't have cell phones in high school because had she she would have learned zero ken i could literally run into I the house did it and i still kind of learned zero i mean i don't really remember anything from high school this is true this I, is <laughs> don't ask me a question about u.s history or or any history for that matter because i don't really know it here's the yeah. thing ken if i were to run into our home okay on fire and all I needed was a bowl of chowder to put out the fire on my body. And Amanda was texting or posting something on Instagram. Okay, that is not true. I would be completely ignored and have to find my that own bowl of chowder to true. throw on myself. Hi. Okay. Also, this is a terrible. Why would you have to put ch pour chowder on your body to, to put out a fire? That's not. Full circle. It's a. Okay. It's well, a, that would never happen. Back. It's got a callback. Okay. Well, that would never happen. And also, that is not true. Sure, I zone out when I'm doing things, but I still know what's happening around me. You just don't think I do, but do I, I. Do you zone out on a horse, Amanda? Oh, that's true. No. Because the horse is the distraction. Like, there's no. I. There's no way to really, at least for me, there's no way to zone out because you, the horse is. The horse has control, though, right? You gotta let, you gotta, you gotta, uh, well, no, you're kind of a team. It's not like mm. you have. Hopefully, if you're if you're mm. like a trained rider or you know what you're doing, then you you have control. But like when I'm on a horse, I feel like I have control of that horse. Yes, yeah, mm. I can tell it to go faster, go slower, stop, turn around. The horse is not in charge of me. See, this is when I rode with my helmet. There's a reason I needed the helmet. The, my horse kept trying to eat, uh, and and the and the rider, the guide was like, "It it's doing that because it knows it can with you. You're not controlling." Yeah. It. And I was like, "What?" And it was like, "It's get it. The horse knows it's getting away with something because it's not supposed to do that. It's not supposed to eat." And I was it's like, so I was, true. What can "Horses I do? know when when there's someone not very smart." on them like they know when you're a beginner because they're like ah, oh, we'll just kind of screw with you for a second we're gonna eat we're gonna buck we're gonna you know just to test you a little bit it's like the horse comes near me real quick and i'm like oh oh hello oh hello yeah no, amanda, amanda was right i i am a dummy on on top of a horse just going disguise you and the horse is like <laughs> apparently according to mike rod in the chat here that there's a spell in harry potter called disguisio manifesto which i'm go. guessing it's just ken in a cape there you go. That's right. Yep. That's all you got to do. And I just go. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, <laughs> if we're not disguising you for Halloween next year, I'll be very, very upset. I'm just a pleated pant American civics teacher. And you're a gay man. I love when people use the term pant to describe a pair of pants. It's my favorite thing. Uh, is that a good cut on that pant? <laughs> you got a good cut to his pant. 
Ken, huge update. Are you ready? Uh, I'm, I'm ready. This is gigantic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me set the stage here. On Monday, okay, me and four buddies, a few of which you know, you know my buddy Tanner, you know my buddy Nick, okay? Yeah. We played in a golf tournament for the Santa Monica High School Athletics Department, okay? Okay, yeah. Now, it's a scramble, okay? And we got, we won the tournament. We got low net, okay? Big win. But yeah. Amanda just left the podcast, so that's cool. She, she just got up and just went. There's a camera on you. You would <laughs> hope nobody noticed. She was hoping no one would notice the blank space next to Josh. I mean, yeah, I guess you're on the podcast. Uh, so. I'll just I'll just put up a picture of Amanda and uh, we can. <laughs> I'll just hold yeah. it there. We'll paint a picture for the audio listeners. Amanda's gone. Okay. Here. Oh, here we go. Here, I'll just hold up this picture of Amanda asleep on the couch. There you go. Oh, that's, okay. that's horrible. There you go. That's there we go. So Amanda's still here. She's zoned out. No worries. I mean, that's she's basically been asleep this whole episode, so it's all good. That's okay. That's <laughs> okay. So apparently there's some sort of like weird scoring system in this outing, and we got low net, but we didn't win the overall something. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So low net. Okay. The grand prize, which is a trophy and something else. But I just got a text from my buddy Ken. I thought we were going home empty-handed. Guess what right. old guess what old team Magoo got? What'd you get? We got a bottle of wine. Oh, to be shared uh between the four of you? No, we each get a bottle of wine. Oh, that's better. Right? That's more, that's more of a win. Ken, this that's is great. the first golf tournament I've won since I was, I don't know, 19 years old with my dad. That's a long and time. Here's the greatest thing about playing golf with my dad because his handicap is so high. Uh, uh, we get so many strokes that we're basically playing like we have like a forty stroke limit. It's amazing. Uh, you're already yeah. Yeah. yeah, he he hit from the front tees, right? Yeah. right? yeah. Oh yeah. John plays it forward, as you say. Plays Listen, it. My dad's seventy two years old. He can do whatever he wants. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, I don't know what my excuse is, but you know, we got to get up to Pismo. We'll play up in Pismo. One oh, time. Little Pismo. You can have a bowl of chowder. I will not. And then we'll play. Um, we'll play. BC Tiller, our uh, official sponsor of the show, Tiller and Sons mm -hmm. Construction and uh, Home Renovation, says, mm -hmm. horsey no fun, never ride in a foreign country with no rules. This is uh, this is life advice. Is that and like the Autobahn? Is that what you're saying? Is that kind of like the Autobahn? I think so. Yeah. No rules as fast as you want. That's crazy. Right. Just get I on the horse and go. Uh, now, I have... One time we were on a family vacation and we went to the island of Santorini in Greece, right? Right. And there you have to climb up these stairs to get to like a main part of the island. And on the way down, you can take a donkey down the stairs. Oh, the donkey. Yes. Yeah. Now, you can also take a gondola, which my mom and dad did. But Ben and I thought that, you know, it'd be cool. Let's take a donkey down. Right. That's not a donkey sound, but. Ken, don't ever ride a donkey down a flight of huge stairs on a Greek island. Let me just tell you. There's a lot of things there in that scenario I'm not going to be doing. My donkey stopped halfway and wouldn't keep going. Like, he was getting whacked. I felt so bad for him. This, like, Greek man was just whacking him with a stick, like, telling him to move. And I was like, hey, man, stop doing that, please. Like, he doesn't seem very happy. And then he wouldn't move. So I just had to walk the rest of the way down the stupid stairs. Once a donkey stops working, it stops working. It's done. It clocks out. It's it doesn't want fair. anything to do with you. I've, uh, I think I've ridden, I've, I've, ridden, I've ridden a mule. They're like a donkey. They're like a donkey's cousin. Mule. Yeah, like isn't a, a mule is a horse mixed with a donkey, right? <laughs> I'm just going to say sure, because I like the idea of that. If you throw in an eagle, it can fly. Like, <laughs> Yeah, just keep having sex with other animals. We'll get there. We'll get it. What? A winged mule. Can somebody in the chat please confirm if that's right? Is a mule a horse mixed with a donkey? Please look it up. I'm I'm, I'm imagining uh, um, Christy McGee is looking on Wikipedia right now to, yeah. find, uh, to find the proof. Oh, hey, look, uh, we can ask Amanda. She knows horses. I She's think that is the. I think that is true. So horses, mules are horse donkeys. Why weren't they called horkies? <laughs> that's that's where did they get mule Hork from? Hornkies? Yeah, like hornkies. Come on over here, little honky. Uh, oh, Evan Osborne oh, Lomax says, correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Ken, let me tell you yeah. something. Would mm -hmm. you want to own a, an animal called a mule or mm -hmm. a hornkey? Uh, I'd want to ride a hornkey into battle. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay. okay. A mule is the offspring of a male donkey, a jack, and a female horse, a mare. So why isn't it called a jack air? A jack air. I like I like Dave and our uh, 1974's Dorses. Dorses uh, are good. Male donkey and female horse. Wow. There's a lot. That's uh <laughs> so horses. <laughs> I like the mule is the offspring of Billy Joel and Christy Brinkley. <laughs> Oh man, Amanda does not get that joke, but I sure do. Was that mean? Was that a mean? No, joke? they got a daughter. Who's great, no, uh, who's Alexa, very pretty, Alexa yeah. Joel or whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's not a shot on her. It's just reading that description. A mule is a male donkey, uh, the offspring of a male donkey and female horse. That's the only example I can think of in our world. <laughs> Ken, but think about this. Okay, back mm -hmm. in the day. Okay, for instance, the country of Germany is called Deutschland. Right, right. So why do we call it Germany? <sighs> this is like the uh, Richard Dick thing. I don't know. Okay, so why is a horse donkey called a mule? It just call it the hornkey. Like Elizabeth Betty. I don't know. I don't know where we get these. So I, that's the kind of History Channel show I want. Yeah, thank you. Like, what? why is William Bill? His name's Will. I mean, yeah. John, Jack, does does your dad ever go by Jack? Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Andrew Cunningham coming in hot straight out of Compton. I think he's in England, if I'm not mistaken. A hemi is the result of breeding between a female donkey and a male horse. So where the hell do we get mule? That's a great question. That's a great question. I need to know the mule, the mule story of it all. Right. The, oh, Ken is hot pun. Hot, 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 hot pun. Well, if I a pun, wow. I don't know. We need to get a, like a, um, for our new venture, Ken, when we mm -hmm. get it, we need to get a button that is just hot pun, hot, hot, hot pun, hot, hot cross puns. Oh, yeah. boom. Shagalaka. We need recorders. There's yep. a shirt. Koi dog is a uh, cated hybrid resulting from mating between a male coyote and a female dog. Yeah, koi dog I, from Young Guns uh, too. Yeah. I mean, I, I absolutely. Uh, you know what a koi dog is? Yeah, I, I got that. Hot, oh yeah, um, hot crossed puns. Hot crossed puns. Hot crossed puns. Did you play recorder in high school? Um, I did play recorder in elementary school, Ooh, elementary and then school. Wow. we had to choose an instrument. In elementary school, I chose the flute, which I never actually learned to play. Shocker. But we had to still do performances, so I would just pretend I was <laughs> I was just doing this. shocker. And I was old like, old Mandy blow. mails it in over <laughs> here. She didn't even play I would the blow. Flute. I would blow in the flute in the flute, but I would just I wouldn't press the <laughs> the little things. I forget what they're called. <laughs> so no one could. I wasn't making you sound know. like I was playing. Because I just couldn't get the, I couldn't play the music. I didn't get it. it <laughs> the was, best is, is all the other girls or guys who are playing flutes <laughs> in the crowd are playing like onto a tune and there's old Mandy mails it in just like. <laughs> I was. If you, like if you, if we had cell phones back then and someone could like record me and zoom in, they'd see my fingers were not moving like the rest of the perform, like the no. rest of the performers. Yeah. She's the Ashley Simpson. I will say. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't want to mess up the, the song, so I just did it, Admirable. you know. Admirable. I can just see uh, <laughs> little Mandy Oaks with like a, like a ribbon in her hair, just, just playing around. Yeah. Pretend, like she, she's into it. <laughs> I, <laughs> but I mean, I, I just didn't care. I, and let's face it, my mom was not the type of parent who was like, I don't care if you don't like it, you're going to do it and learn it. She was just kind of like, that's so sweet. You're doing the flute. Meanwhile, I think she probably knew I wasn't really playing, but she was like, it's adorable. And you're being creative and you're a true artist. I will say, yep. Ken, on, on the flip side of that is for <laughs> one year in fourth grade, I took saxophone and we had a band concert for the saxophone. And oh, yeah. afterwards, my dad said, did you actually play the music? And I was like, yes. And he was like, oh, good job. Oh, and he's oh well. All right. Um, I yeah, I didn't have any musical performances. I had a lot of little acting performances where I, you know, uh, I don't know. Music now, of the body, Ken. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now I wish I now I wish I could have um, played like the tambourine live in a school play. I had to do something. I did play one of the three little pigs. 
mm. in a school play. And I'll tell you what, I was committed to that role. Yeah. I had the hay house. I had the hay house. <laughs> you know who brought the hay, Ken? And uh, no, the horn. The horn. <laughs> the horn, the horn, horn key. brought them in. I, uh, we did a Christmas play in sixth grade um, where my friend played Santa Claus. And the girl I had a crush on played Elfie the Elf, who was Santa's helper. And I remember having to sing that song on stage. I, oh. I gave my all. I gave my all. Elfie the Elf was Santa's helper. I kind of remember that. <laughs> well done. That is very good memory. Michael Kaltzer, speaking of uh, hybrid animals, did you get the Alpen dog <laughs> question last night on Jeopardy? It was the final uh, Jeopardy Ooh. question. It was dog breeds. Originally going to be called the Alpen dog. They instead chose this breed of dog. Ken, your answer. Um, 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 sorry, I was not being a Mandy uh, distraction. Uh, uh, my mom sent an otter and a cat um, as pet friends, and I had to forward that video to Grace. Was it uh, a cotter? It was a welcome back cotter. Mm. Uh, so the question is, Alpen dog question, what is the breed of the dog? Say again. Oh, I missed it. The Alpen dog was, ori was originally supposed to be called the Alpen dog, but it instead was named this breed. Oh, uh, the snow pooch. So, Pooch, final answer, Amanda. What is a husky? No, Damn. we were looking for Saint Bernard. It's the Whoa. Saint Bernard, the okay. Alpen dog, aka I the had Saint, a Bernard. Saint Bernard when I was little. Didn't know that. Didn't know it was. I always, name. yeah, I always wanted a Saint Bernard because they all came with a, a bottle of drink, <laughs> and I just assumed that as a kid. It's a you go to the pound and there's a Saint Bernard with like a. A barrel of rum <laughs> right <laughs> under his ball. All right. Colton Wilson real quick says, uh, my brother tricked me into asking to play the skin flute when I was in the fourth grade. My teacher, like myself, didn't know what that was. Bless Mrs. Maxwell. Oh. Weirdly enough, Ken, guess who dated Mrs. Maxwell? Uh, Mr. Disguise. <laughs> That's correct. Yep. Yeah, Mr. Disguise. -io. They had a torrid love affair. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, she tried to get him to change his pleated pants, but he said, yep. no way. These are disguise your originals. I only buy one pair of pants every school year in the yep. same color. And he would uh, he would make love in the pant and uh, would uh, turn the lights off right before and yell, disguise yo, and come jump into bed. It all comes full circle. All full circle. Uh, uh, Ken, we got a super chat here from Evan Osborne Lomax. Um, I don't – I believe – you know, he said, while I'm now a Bond villain, I once had a career as a pro lacrosse player that ended tragically after a storied college collegiate career. Mm. Um, interesting. I believe that Evan Osborne Lomax scored three goals against the Penn State Nittany Lions in 2007. One of them mm. um, has, is still talked about in lacrosse uh, annals, uh, lacrosse circles, annals, you know, the, the tomes, if you will. Yeah. Because it's the first ever uh, cartwheel backflip lacrosse goal. Yeah, it was, and they call it a they call it a, a EOL uh, and Evan o Os Osborne Lomax. Yeah, yeah, his injury, his uh, his uh, pro lacrosse uh, career kind of came to an end with an injury, but it happened off the field. He actually was uh, going up uh, stairs in his uh, uh, house uh, carrying a, uh, a a henny on his uh, back. Uh, back, and he yeah. slipped, fell, tore ACL, MCL, all the LCLs, all the all the CLs, uh, and his career was over from that point on. The whole thing um you know evan osborne lomax his parents had big dreams for him they really did um they they put him in 4-h where he bred many mules aka horn keys yeah um and when he first it, the crazy story was he was at 4-h and as he was you know he, he had a, a stall a a barn full of mules and hinnies and koi dogs that he was breeding and a neighbor kid was playing lacrosse and accidentally winged the ball and it hit him in the head. Nice. The ball hit him in the head and he picked it up and he said, what is this? And just like Einstein or uh, whoever the apple hit, Galileo, Copernicus, I'm not sure which one hit the apple. I think, hit I think it hit the indigo girls. Yeah. Hit the indigo girls. Thank you. Um, he said, maybe I should play this sport. So he yeah. fashioned a lacrosse stick out of uh, an old piece of wood that he found yeah. in the barn and he tied the net with mm -hmm. hay that he was feeding his horn keys and yeah. toy dogs and, and, and minis, oh, yeah. minis. And it uh, became what some would say the first grassroots hot lacrosse player in the uh, 21st century. Yeah, they actually optioned this story for a film. Robert Redford, who, of course, uh, did something similar with The, Nash, uh, the Na uh, Natural, uh, optioned this story. He's going to produce it. Uh, Chris Pine is going to actually be playing Evan Osborne Lomax uh, in the film. And, and I think they were going to title the film Hot Lacrosse Puns. Oh, Hot Lacrosse Puns. 
that's the one. That's, that's the it. one, Amanda. Yeah. Amanda brought it home. Um, but uh, yeah, as as of right now, Evan Osborne Lomax is a working Bond villain. Yeah, uh, he's been chasing uh, all the double O's, not just Bond, but and folk. Bond. The reason he's been called this Bond villain, uh, Evan Osborne Lomax, is that because his great uncle Bernie Lomax, who died tragically over a two movie period. Um, they, they didn't want people getting confused. Evan Lomax, Bernie Lomax sounds very similar. So he added the Osborne in there and is also sponsored by Oscorp in the Spider-Man universe. That's true. And Evan Osborne Lomax, a uh, distant fifth cousin of Neil Lomax, former, uh, Phoenix Cardinals, well, actually St. Louis Cardinals football quarterback. Um, uh, that's that John De La Salle says, what did I just walk into? You walked into the truth about Evan Osborne Lomax. It's true. And you know, we, we, we are nothing here, but Behringers of the truth at the afternoons and we are John Behringers of the truth. It's true. And Evan Osborne Lomax, um, love his IMDb profile and his Tom, his, his turn as in the Tom Behringer one man play sniper. Mm -hmm. um, it's still mm -hmm. talked about off, off Broadway in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, they would off, off, that's off, 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 off Broadway. Uh, mm -hmm. there you go. Um, yeah. I think we did a good job and, yeah, um, we we're gonna have to wrap up soon. Um, it's one of those, it's a special morning that we didn't mean to be here in the mornings on yeah. the West Coast. Uh, this is not when we normally do live Josh, but, uh, we couldn't schedule anything yesterday. It was, yeah. it was kind of a tennis match of what's open in our lives. So we're happy to be here. We are. We've tried to get something done on Thursday. Uh, all of our schedules, um, including my unborn child, just didn't align mm -hmm. with the show. And yep. so here we are, <sighs> 10 a.m. Uh, Western. 10 a.m. Western? Yeah. 10 a.m. <laughs> Western. That's not wrong. It's not wrong. <laughs> 10 a.m. Uh, on the West Coast, 11 East Coast, and wherever you are in the world, we appreciate you guys Ten, wait, watching. 10 a.m. is not 11 on the East Coast. What'd I say? You One said 10 a.m. on the West Coast, 11 a.m. on the East Coast. 1 p.m. on the East Coast. Yeah. That's my bad. Now trending towards 2 p.m. there on the East Coast. And uh, we appreciate you guys watching the afternoons, listening to the afternoons in podcast form. And we really appreciate all the people that have supported Evan Osborne Lomax in his post lacrosse career as yeah. you know, it's hard for him to walk, let alone bond villain because yeah. his entire left leg is made from the muscles that were taken from his prize horn key, Gerald. <laughs> thanks for, thanks for supporting him. Uh, we, we really appreciate that there. Uh, so next week, Josh is Thanksgiving. I will, I don't know if we'll have a show. We'll figure that out. You guys are traveling and, uh, I'll be around here, but, uh, it's, uh, it's a holiday. I'll be having some V Gurky, V V vegan Turkey, V Gurky. I think it's uh, called Furky. Yeah, maybe that might be a right. toe Furky, but yeah. it's not. Honestly, I'd rather have the the Gurky or whatever it is because I hate turkey. I hate turkey unless it's ground turkey in like a, a taco burger. bowl or a burger yeah. or something. Uh, who likes just sliced straight up turkey? Yes, Ugh. I need it, but I need it with gravy, 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 gravy. Mash yeah, potatoes. but then at that point, it's just the vessel for the gravy. What's the point? I just give me the stuffing, the gravy, and the mashed potatoes, and then throw the turkey against the window oh, and see if it slides God. down. I really need to watch my eating next week. I'll tell you that. The gravy. I'm already packing the LBs, if you know what I mean. I do know what you mean. I do want what you mean. Uh, all right. Uh, we're going to wrap up. We're going to wrap up. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, thank you, Josh. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, everyone. Kristen McGee, John Mariano, Mateus, uh, uh, Rodrigo, everyone out there. We uh, love uh, your support and hope. A special uh, thanks to Evan Osborne Lomax for making the time, too. Yep. Demi. Demi's here. Uh, thank you, Demi. We're on our way out of here, though. Uh, I'll play the right song to wrap us up this time because uh, this is the afternoons uh, with Josh Ken Amanda, a quick and silly look at a serious world. It doesn't matter when you listen, Ken, as long as your pants are pleated like Mr. Disguisio's in 2001. It's always a fake story. <laughs> the afternoons. Make love in a pant. <laughs> Make love in a pant.